Hey, y'all. It's Mike. We're down in the wood yard. Uh, yesterday we went up to up the road there. They're doing some construction on our road, and, and they cut down a bunch of trees. And uh, so they gave all the what was laying on the side of the road to the public. And uh, what the landowners didn't want, of course, respectful of that. But me and the wife and the Ford Ranger and a little single axle trailer went up there, and I got two loads worth it. You know, that uh, it's quite a bit of wood, big oak tree and a hickory, and a few uh, looks like oak logs, maybe a sweet gum in there. I ain't for sure on that. Yeah, we're gonna sharpen the saw up because yesterday getting that wood off the road went in. Uh, Dulled the chain, so I'm gonna touch it up a little bit. I'm by no, by no means am I an expert, so don't expect any expert doings here. Just a homeowner who likes to split wood and sell it. Show you my saw. I have an Echo 7310. It's got a 32-inch bar on it. I do know that you flip your bar. At least every time or every other time you sharpen it. So after I get done with this, I'm going to flip it. I'm getting that chain's pretty dull. Well, yeah, it's pretty dull. So I'm going to hit it with uh, the file, which I keep. I, I bought this here off of, off of Amazon, and it took a minute to get it because but it's hard to find. You can put your deal in it for when you're going to the woods, but. I really like it, man. It's got gas, mixed gas, and your oil, and your oil chain oil. I love it. Uh, keep my flat file, round file, my scrunch over here. Has another little tool deal, and then this is not sponsored by any means. I got a few other things. A little guide, you know. I use uh, a pen, a pen to mark the the chain where I start, and a raker guide right there. Yeah. I like this thing. It is handy. I'm telling you. I got everything I need to go take care of other than wedges. Whatever I need in the woods. Or sawing wise. Now, the way I do it, I'm sure anybody who has experience doing this does the same thing. I'm going to mark this tooth here, which is on that side. I'm going to mark this tooth here, which is on the opposite side, this side. That way I know where to start. Or where to stop where I started. Pull the chain break. Some people wear gloves. And I usually get on the saw like this. You know, and on these older trucks versus the higher the, the newer trucks, man, they're lower. I mean this is a three-quarter ton Ford 89 model. And it's just low enough where I can get in here about right I put my glasses on. You know, and then I can it about, I mean, it's comfortable. And then hit this about three, four times. You know, get to where I want it. Now I am looking at that guide back here. That little line right here. You probably see it right there. That little line. I'm trying to match that angle. Yeah. Yep. That's where I want it. Now. A lot of times, I use this guide. And I like this Husqvarna one. Uh, everybody has their own opinion about everything. So if you don't like it, that's good for you. I'm glad you don't need it. Sometimes I need it. Because I'm shaky and all that good stuff. Pull that back here. And then I just do that right there. And I just move on to the next one. Some of this stuff, it's uh, grease, and I put some in my tip right there. Just one push is all I give it. 
you know, bar maintenance. I'm not gonna file my rakers because yesterday when I was cutting, it was jumping. So I think I might have filed them a little too much last time. And I don't, I don't know if I used that gauge. I don't think I used that gauge. I was trying to see the video on YouTube. Like I was saying, I seen a video on YouTube and a fellow was talking about filing his rakers and he filed them uh, like, he said he like hit them to, you know, once or twice without a raker gauge. And I did that. And I'm gonna use raker gauge from now on, learn my lesson. Um, but we're going to, I gotta get, let me get this, uh, this stuff put up and uh, my sharpening stuff, put my chaps on, and then we'll get started on using my, my uh, stick, or my PVC, it's 16 inches. Well, I almost forgot, let me show y'all this thing working. I've had this thing, oh God, two, three years, and uh, it still works pretty good, man. Well, first time on film. There you go. I guess it's full of gas. Let's pop that out. That O ring, there's an O ring at the end of this. It's, uh, like I said, I've had it for two, three years, something like that. I'm gonna tell you, I really like this thing. I don't know if I said it like, oh yeah, I've only said it what, seven, eight times already? As you can see, I got them, them on there. That's just in case. Uh, I was doing that in the beginning. I started all this firewood jazz. Let me top that off. And uh, it was all right, it works. I mean, but what I was finding was like, some of the pieces, I, I get them a little too long, you know, and uh, that was the only bad thing, but a lot of that could have been I was in too big a hurry or whatever. But uh, if I'm out and uh, and I forget my little PVC pipe there, it's pretty handy. That's for sure. That was a good idea. I'm going to be honest, I stole that from Chris at Woodyard. That's where I got that idea from. Except I don't have any pink tape. Anyway. But you know how them folks up north are. Just kidding. There you go. I'm fueled up. I don't use a compression button. Turn the switch on. Yeah, helps a lot.
Got some chips in the chain. Well, y'all. Weather's starting to get a little sour. I gotta get my wood splitter put up, covered up, and uh, I'm gonna take this phone. I ain't gonna have it out here in this rain. So, uh, we're gonna get these rounds done, maybe, today. Hopefully today we'll get them done. Not for sure tomorrow ain't supposed to be raining. So, uh, shoot, y'all uh, have a good one. We'll see y'all next time. You know, like, subscribe, share, all that jazz. And uh, hope to see y'all on the next one. Bye, team.